Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. I've been working all day, so I got on my clean out outfit, as you can tell. It's, uh, it's April. Can you believe that? April 2013. I'm going to be in Toronto this coming weekend, this next weekend. So if you want to come see me in action and doing a complete lube and a tune, contact the Toronto MG Car Club. Hey, I got an email from Jonathan E. from the UK who said he had a 71 MGB and he wanted me to show how to properly jack a car, how to jack it up, how he can work under it safely with some, some modicum of, of uh, um, good feeling that the car isn't, isn't going to fall. Now you've all seen these cars, you've driven by as someone's got a car jacked up on a bumper jack and they have it up there, two guys underneath and they're trying to put a transmission in and you see this thing kind of swaying on a bumper jack, huh? And you go, oh my gosh, and then every year you read about somebody who's had their car up on jack stands or concrete blocks and the things come down, you know, and it crushes them. And every now and then there's a woman who's 65 years old who lifts a 2,000 or 3,000 pound car off someone and she's hailed as a hero. Don't expect that to happen. It's going to crush you. It's going to kill you if it falls on you. One of the most inventive w things that I ever saw when I was in my old shop on Eastern Avenue, I was driving around the block and here's a guy who'd driven this uh, deuce and a quarter, uh, Electra 225, uh, up into a snowbank and had scooped out an area underneath and then was lying there on a blanket working on the transmission. And of course that wouldn't have collapsed, it just slowly melt. So he was pretty safe. I want to talk to you about jacks and jacking. This is a jack. This is a trolley jack, okay? It's got four wheels. It moves around. That's the trolley part of it. It's a trolley jack. A trolley jack lifts the car. This is a jack stand. The jack stand holds the car. Okay, this is a pretty weeny one. Plenty big for an MGB, okay? So, so we're, we, we're only dealing with 500 pounds a corner, so this is perfectly, perfectly reasonable. You got a, a trolley jack and a jack stand. You never, ever, ever, jack a car up and work on the car without a jack stand okay jacks are for jacking jack stands are for holding and use a good jack stand the reason you don't use a concrete block you know people say well geez a concrete block will hold a building up look on the, the base of this building is built with concrete blocks yes but it's all secured with mortar and all the stress is evenly placed on the concrete block I mean if you had to use a concrete block then you would at least have to sandwich it with pieces of plywood, okay, so that all the stress wasn't in one spot on the concrete block because then it'll burst and, and the car will collapse. So, the jack is for jacking, the jack stand is for holding. Once you get the jack, once you get the car up in the air, then you put the jack stands underneath it. Where do you put them? Well, you put them underneath the frame rails if you're going to be working on the suspension. On the other hand, if you're going to be just changing the oil, you can put them underneath the front coil springs. On a T-type, for instance, with a very rigid frame, or an MGA, you got four jack stands. You push the four jack stands underneath the car. Three points determine a plane, so the fourth one is never in line. So you, mostly when you jack up a T-type, you can move it, tunk, 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 tunk. That doesn't give any sense of, of safety, so you got to use a wood shim or something and put it in above one of the jack stands so that the car no longer moves. After you've jacked the car up and you put the jack stands underneath it, then get up and shake the car violently and, and, and make sure that it stays on the jack stands. I mean, if, it, if it's going to fall off the jack stands, better that you're standing here and it falls than being underneath it. You know, with a breaker bar that long and you're pulling on it, pulling on something, a drain plug, trying to get it undone and you're really putting some torque on the car, bad time to have it collapse. A couple years ago in 2010, I was at uh, Sandusky, Ohio at GOF Central. 
Jim Pesta and I were changing a guy's uh, half shaft. We had to take his differential apart to get a snapped half shaft out. And we're underneath there. I mean, we're taking the differential half apart underneath the car. And the car's kind of jiggling around. Pesta's a big guy, I'm a big guy, and we're struggling with this thing. And uh, there's a whole series of, of armchairs around us with all these silver-haired gentlemen all watching us, you know, like, uh, like an ultimate TV show. And one guy points out to me and he goes, you know, that jack stand doesn't look like it's, be, you know, it's supporting the car very well. <laughs> by that much, the jack stand was, uh, was holding the car by that much. And I, I hadn't been careful, I hadn't followed my own advice. Good thing that thing hadn't, didn't come down on me. Later that night, I hit a deer. Uh, traveling at uh, 75 miles an hour at mile marker 52 on Interstate 96. That was about uh, 2.30 or so in the morning. Totaled the car. That was a fast day. I almost lost my life with a jack stand and I almost lost my life with a deer. Somebody was talking to me and saying, slow down. But that's another subject. <clears throat> Personal matters, we won't, uh, we won't go there anyway. So, <clears throat> if you're jacking the car up to work on the front end, you can jack up the front end of the car. If you want to jack the whole car up, for some reason, you want to lift, lift the whole car up, always jack it front first, and then the back, and when you put it down, put the back down first, and then put the front down. Front first, always jack it front first. If you jack the rear end, and put jack stands underneath the rear springs, and then you begin to jack the front end, the car will slide. It's done this with me. And it slides off the jack. And then the whole weight of the car is supported on the radiator. And the radiator goes like that with a customer standing there. Bad news, okay? Always jack it with the front, put the jack stands underneath the front, and then jack up the back end. Now, let's say you're working on the exhaust. The exhaust runs down the side of the car. You don't have to bring the whole car up horizontally. You can tip the car. You can tip it way up on its side. You can't turn the car over. You can't flip it over. That's, that's uh, impossible. So anyway, let's just take, take a look. We're going to jack the car. Now there's a cross member, which I don't have a picture of, but there's a cross member that goes underneath the front suspension. There are two holes in there, and there's a lip on the back. There are these sort of crummy little teeth here on the on the trolley jack so you catch you catch the cross member so the cross member runs here on the front side of the teeth so this cannot pull off and it's essential that you have a clean floor okay now remember you're jacking the car up on the rear wheels you don't want to block the rear wheels you want the car in neutral oh my gosh the car's going to roll backwards no it's not it's just going to jack up, but as the car jacks up, the front of the uh, the front of the car moves towards the rear, right from the triangle. When you're using a trolley jack, that paddle's coming up. So we have these two items that the cross member here and the jack here. And if we hit a bolt or a piece of crud on the on the floor, and the trolley jack stops moving forward, or if we have the car in gear and it can't move then they're going to pull away from e each other as you jack it up and the car is going to fall on the jack okay so the floor has to be clean car has to be in neutral let me follow my own advice put the car in neutral and break off I know it seems counterintuitive, oh my god, you have to block the rear wheels to keep it from rolling, but remember when you were a kid, someone said, hey, I figured out how, how you can pedal real easily on your bike. Let's put a big wheel in the back and a front wheel in the front, and you're always going downhill. Doesn't work, right? Same reason the car isn't going to move here when, when we jack it up. So we're going to catch the cross member there. There, see? So I've got the, I've got the teeth. I can't pull the jack out. The teeth on the on the on the uh, paddle on the trolley jack have caught that. Now I can go ahead and jack the car up. Now where am I going to put the jack stand? Again, I can put it either underneath the A arm, out underneath the wheel. But if I do that, I can't work on the suspension, right? Because suspension's all collapsed. So I'd put it on the frame, 
again if I'm going to change if I'm going to change the oil or I don't know work on the exhaust or change the slave cylinder or something then you can go ahead and, and, uh, and use this on the on the A-arms up front. In the back end we're going to catch the middle of the differential right the diff the diff comes down in the bottom differential sits between the wheels and just jack up there. Now on a T-type, that is a TD or TF, the drain plug sticks that far out of the bottom of the differential. Better to take a block of wood, drill a hole in it, put that block of wood over over the uh, drain plug and jack up the block of wood which then jacks up the diff so that the entire weight of the rear end of the car is not supported by that little quarter inch BSP fitting on the back. So again, we'll catch this. Oh, let me find it here. Here it is. And again, you know, this thing won't uh, won't slide off now. These not slide off very easily. We can jack this thing up. Now the question is. Where do we put the jack stands? We can put them underneath the rear axle, but then that allows the rear wheels to come up into the wheel arches. Sometimes you get, can't get the wheels off, so it's a bad idea to put the jack stands under the rear axle if you're working on the rear brakes or the rear wheels or something. So you put them at the front of the leaf springs. On the leaf springs, that's where I put them. Right at the very front on the leaf springs. You can put them in front of the leaf springs, but you know, there's some rust issues with some of the cars and it can get kind of creepy up there. But if it's on the leaf springs, that means that it can slip, it can move, which is why you always jack the front first and then the back and then back down first and then the front. If on the other hand, you want to work on the side of the car, I almost always in this case would put a block of wood here which I haven't accounted for yet. Just a moment, here's a block of wood. To even out the, even out the, uh, the pressures here, I'm going to put this whole thing just on the back side of the jacking hole, the factory jacking hole, you can jack here and jack up the side of the car. A comment about the factory jack. Have it in the boot. When the car show comes, have it all laid out, nicely displayed. Never, ever use the factory jack. They're awful, dangerous. Get a, get a little scissors jack that you work with a, with a crank. You can slip in underneath and it lifts up with a scissors action. So somebody says, oh, guess what, I'm, I'm going to buy you a jack for your car. And they get you a, a pneumatic bottle jack that this, that's this tall. Well, when you get a flat tire, there's nothing underneath the car that allows you to get that bottle jack in. So if they're going to buy a bottle jack, they better buy you a, a U.S. Army entrenching tool to dig a hole to put the bottle jack in and then jack up the car, right? So those bottle jacks aren't very handy for this application. But you can jack this thing up. You can jack him way, way, way up in the air. But if the car has suffered any kind of um, rusting issues, then you can begin to collapse it. And I would not jack on the bottom of the jacking tube because it'll just, it'll just uh, get up. But you can jack this thing way, way, way up in the air and slip your jack stands in underneath on, on the frame on both sides. And you can work on the exhaust, easy as can be. So, jacks are for jacking, jack stands are for holding. You can leave the jack underneath while you're working on it, but you always must have jack stands. Now let me show you a picture here that is, well, it's a hoot, but uh, you'll love it. 
Although the postcard is like really, I mean, help me out. That's a pretty good picture. Um, don't ever, ever, ever get underneath the car with just the jack and certainly not with someone in there. Hey, it's been great. Enjoyed talking to you today. Uh, enjoyed uh, responding to Jonathan E from steeds.net, something like that in the UK. And I look forward to, uh, I've got a couple more requests. One is to aim the headlights. One is to rebuild a 68 through 74 MGB brake master cylinder. That's a task. Look at this, the full house tonight. TC, TD, TF, MGA 1500, MGA 1600, MGA 1600 Mark II Deluxe, no MGA coupes. Chrome bumper MGBs, rubber bumper MGBs, MGB GTs, MGB GT V8, cars from Canada, cars from Grand Rapids. So hey, we have it all here today. Look forward to seeing all of you sometime this summer. Safety fast.